Today, let's delve deeper into the scoop we've got about Jason and Lucia, straight from the game's artwork and that initial trailer drop. Seems like Rockstar's shining the spotlight a tad more on Lucia this time around. Not to downplay Jason's role, but Lucia's getting some special attention, you know? Alright, so the trailer kicks off with Lucia finding herself in what appears to be a detention center, or maybe some kind of confinement. She's sporting the classic inmate gear and hanging out with a few others. Now, it's a bit fuzzy whether it's an old girls club or a mixed bag. But here's the twist. It doesn't look like your hardcore, maximum security joint. More like a temporary pit stop. Then we see this scene with Stephanie, a counselor at the place. Stephanie's having a chat with Lucia, trying to untangle her situation. Stephanie asks why Lucia's landed there, and Lucia nonchalantly responds with something like, bad luck, I guess. It's got me thinking, maybe Lucia's in for something minor. You know, the wrong place, wrong time scenario, or maybe a string of small time scrapes. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. So, Lucia's starting off in a bit of a pickle, but I'm itching to see how the story unfolds, how she got caught up in this mess in the first place. Rockstar's got us all on the edge of our seats with this setup, and I can't wait to see what twists and turns are in store for these characters. Taking a closer peek at Lucia in this clip, she doesn't strike me as too old or hardcore, you know? Surprisingly, she's not all cuffed up or tightly restrained while having a chat with Stephanie, the counselor at this place. Stephanie's vibe doesn't scream in danger while talking to Lucia, so maybe her time in jail isn't as intense as we might think. So, Lucia's got a date with jail at some point. But yeah, she's not going to be stuck in there forever, that's for sure. Let's shift gears to this artwork Rockstar's thrown at us. In that pic, Lucia's flaunting an ankle monitor. Now that's the kind of thing they slap on you when you're out but not really free. It's like they're keeping tabs on you, making sure you stick to a certain area, like your home turf or maybe a specific part of town, as set by the powers that be. Now let's dive into some wild speculation on how this whole ankle monitor deal might mix things up in the gameplay. Imagine Imagine navigating the game with that kind of electronic ball and chain. It's gotta influence how Lucia moves around or what she can get into. Maybe it restricts her to certain zones or forces her to lay low in certain situations. The possibilities are buzzing around my head. It's like a marker that says she's out of the big house but under some major watch. You see, when you've got one of those strapped on, it's like a 24-7 reminder that you're under strict scrutiny. It's like a digital leash telling you, hey, no funny business or else. Now think about how this could shake up the game's map dynamics. Rockstar might play a throwback card to the old GTA vibes, where you're restricted to certain parts of the map at the start. As you progress through the story, you gradually unlock more turf to roam. Picture Lucia, stuck in a zone until she can shake off that monitor, whether she manages to ditch it by some gutsy escape or someone legally gives her the green light. Fast forward a bit and we spot Jason and Lucia in a pretty dicey scene. Jason's in the driver's seat, Lucia's riding shotgun, and they're peeling away from what looks like a scene post crime. A couple of cop cars are hot on their tail, lights flashing and sirens blaring. Jason's got his hands tight on the wheel, sneakily glancing at the cops as they whiz past. Then, when they're out of sight, he shoots Lucia a glance that screams serious concern. It's crystal clear these two are linked somehow, tied together by that ankle monitor and whatever legal trouble they're entangled in. How's that for a curveball in the storyline? There's this air of suspense and questions lingering. What did they do? And how does it all connect back to Lucia's time in the slammer? The plot thickens and I'm itching to see where this tangled web leads us. Let's zoom in on Lucia for a moment. You know, it's not giving off that classic jailbreak vibe. When you make a daring escape from the big house, you don't come out with an ankle monitor like you've been given a hall pass. Nah, it's more like you become public enemy number one, constantly dodging the long arm of the law. It's got echoes of that on the run feel from Red Dead Redemption 2, where you're always watching your back. Wonder if Rockstar's planning to revisit that kind of storyline here? But here's a thought that's been gnawing at me. What if Jason's got this noble quest to keep Lucia out of hot water. Could be, but there's this lingering sense that they've got some pressing reasons behind these actions. It's like they're in this situation either by design or due to some pressing needs. Speaking of which, let's take a peek at the next scene in the sequence. You've got Lucia holding a bundle of cash that could make anyone's eyes widen, stacks of 20s and crisp hundreds. And what's she doing? Nonchalantly turning away from law enforcement? It's like we're getting a glimpse into the aftermath of a successful heist. And then there's this sight, both of them, dressed up with bandanas and masks, keeping their identities under wraps as they bolt out of what seems to be a rundown corner store situated in the middle of nowhere. There's this air of confidence about them, but choosing a low-profile place like this hints at something. They're not doing this for kicks. No, it's like they're in dire need of funds. Now let's talk about Jason's wheels. It's not some flashy top-of-the-line ride like you'd expect from Michael DeSanta's swanky tailgater in GTA V. Nope, Jason's driving an older model, something more modest. It gives off this vibe that they might not be swimming in cash. 
The whole picture seems to paint a story of urgency. Lucia's holding a stash of cash, they're hitting a low-key spot, and Jason's not cruising around in luxury. It's like they're pushed into a corner, perhaps strapped for cash, and pushed into some tough choices. There's definitely more to this tale than meets the eye. Let's dive into Jason and Lucia's ride. They're cruising around, making these slick turns and slides. It doesn't seem like they're trying to dodge cops. You can even hear Lucia kind of squeal. She's gripping the car's side in a way that screams, thrill ride. Looks like they've got a pretty upbeat and tight relationship. They're heading towards a motel. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, they're more than just partners in crime. Yup, Jason and Lucia are romantically involved. Now, Rockstar's not laying it all out for us, but you can pretty much read between the lines. Now, let's dissect this trust business. Feels like Rockstar's planting seeds for the storyline's ending. Trust can either be kept intact or shattered, right? It's like a pivotal point in a tale of two partners in crime. Maybe they'll face a dilemma where they have to choose between both making it out alive or going for a massive score, but someone doesn't make it to the finish line. Trust seems to be the crux of it all. And here's the kicker, the final scene. They kick open the door of this corner store, all confident, guns out, ready to hit the jackpot. The story concludes on that note. Now, let's switch lanes and talk about the trailer's song choice, Tom Petty's Love Is A Long Road. Interestingly, there's a tweet from Tom Petty's account expressing gratitude for having their song featured in GTA 6's first trailer. The song itself talks about the struggles of maintaining a relationship, how it's not a smooth ride, but worth the effort. So GTA 6 might just be more than a crime tale. It's shaping up to be a love and trust story. I think Rockstar's aiming for their twist on a Bonnie and Clyde vibe with Jason and Lucia. That's pretty much all the scoop we got about them in the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. They didn't spill much, but we kinda got a glimpse into their journey, the hurdles they face, and this theme of trust that seems to run deep in their story. There's this one scene where it looks like they're gaining some traction in their journey. Jason's driving, Lucia's standing up in the passenger seat, and some paparazzi or somebody's snapping their pics. Seems like they've leveled up from their clothes to the car they're driving. So, at some point in the story, they might hit some highs. But knowing how these stories go, it could all come crashing down by the end. So, that's pretty much the lowdown on Jason and Lucia, our main characters in GTA 6. Can't wait to dig into their stories more. What do you folks reckon the GTA 6 plot's gonna be like? Which character are you stoked to play? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you like this video, a thumbs up would be cool. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here and want to stay updated on all things GTA 6. Don't forget to ring that notification bell too. The release of the GTA 6 trailer in 2023 has sent shockwaves of excitement across the gaming community. The anticipation and buzz surrounding this highly anticipated title have reached an all-time high. Fans worldwide are feverishly dissecting every frame, theorizing about the game's setting, characters, and innovative features. The hype is palpable as gamers eagerly await the next chapter in the beloved GTA series, poised to redefine open-world gaming once again. Alright, so in the GTA 6 trailer, there's this moment where this girl in a white bikini gets everyone talking, debating whether she's Lucia or not. She's chilling near this pool, taking in the Vice City skyline, and then she turns around. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of stuff to unpack there. Her hair moves all natural-like, swinging around as she turns. She's got these big hoop earrings, cool purple sunglasses, rocking a purple lipstick, and check out those nails, French tips. Oh, and there's this bracelet on her left wrist that catches the eye too. Now, here's the deal. Some folks are saying, nah, Ah, there is absolutely no way that is Lucia, or it just doesn't cross anyone's mind. Their argument? She looks different from how Lucia appeared in other shots, especially in that jumpsuit and during the whole crime spree with Jason. But hold up, there's a good chance that in GTA Online, customization's gonna be off the charts. Need a different haircut? No biggie, just swing by the in-game salon. Problem solved, so who knows? This bikini girl might just be a customized version of Lucia with a whole new look and vibe. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. You know, I'm pretty confident that it won't cause much trouble. Just like in GTA 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2, it feels like they'll let us switch up our characters' hairstyles again, which is pretty cool. Now, about this scene, it looks like it's happening at a totally different stage of the game. At the start, Lucia's all locked up in jail, doing those petty crimes and all. But in this snippet, she's looking like she's hit the jackpot. Loads of success and riches. There's more to this in the trailer, giving us a peek into what a thriving Lucia might look like. She's sporting a different hairstyle, dressed to the nines, hanging out in a fancy car with Jason behind the wheel. And to top it off, the girl's getting her photos taken by the paparazzi. Some folks out there are betting that this bikini girl is gonna be the face of Rockstar's marketing strategy. You know, just like how they've always had that iconic female figure in their marketing since the good old days of GTA 3. So, putting it all together, it really seems like this bikini girl is Lucia. From the style to the little details like the various hairstyles, everything seems to point in that direction. It's exciting to get these glimpses of what 
what Lucia's different phases might look like in the game. Rockstar's been doing this thing with the promo girls for ages, from the early days of GTA 3 to the more recent GTA 5. You might remember them. The girl in the bikini holding the martini glass, or the San Andreas girl leaning over at the Vinewood sign with those shades. They've always had these distinctive figures for their marketing. A bunch of people are pointing fingers at this bikini girl, saying she's the new Rockstar promo face. But I've got my money on Lucia. Take a look at those birthmarks and accessories, those little marks on her face and arm. They're pretty similar to what the bikini girls got. Sure, some aren't super clear, but makeup or sun exposure could easily cover them up. And those earrings and bracelets? They match up pretty well with all the girls who look like Lucia, even if some shots might leave room for doubt? Like the one where she's driving that fancy car. I'm pretty convinced it's Lucia. Jason's checking her out. The accessories are a close match, and her facial structure lines up. Not to mention, her body shape, facial features, skin tone, hair length, and color, pretty much all of it lines up perfectly. In that scene, the way the bikini girl moves seems a bit forced, like she's intentionally flipping her hair or something. So maybe it's part of a mission, Lucia trying to blend in at some event to gather info, or pull off a heist. Or perhaps it's one of those moments where she's at the top of her game, all successful and loaded. Oh, and that bikini she's wearing? It's from the Santino brand, which first showed up in GTA 5. So, in GTA Online, we've got this whole range of clothing options, right? There are jackets, shoes, and some of them even parody luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, which is a real high-end clothing and accessories label. Now, some people are throwing around this theory that the bikini girl might be a returning character from the old GTA Vice City like Mercedes Cortez. But honestly, that's way off. Vice City was set in the 80s, and GTA 6 is gonna be in the present. Like, probably around 2023. So the timelines just don't add up. Even though this bikini girl looks a bit different and acts a bit like an influencer, I'm pretty convinced she's Lucia. She's got those same body features and face structure as Lucia. And Lucia's a game changer as the first leading lady in modern Rockstar games. Before her, female characters mostly played supporting roles or were just NPCs in GTA games, never the main focus. Rockstar tends to put a lot of effort into their main characters. The little differences like the sunglasses or lipstick don't bother me much. We know there'll be in game stuff you can buy, like accessories. And hey, being able to change hairstyles was a big deal in games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. So I'm pretty confident that the girl in that white bikini on that Vice City rooftop is Lucia. But yeah, I get it, there's gonna be a lot of chatter and debate. Remember the crazy theories from past GTA trailers? Like people saying the homeless guy was Nico Bellic? Or that Michael was an older Tommy Versetti? It's always possible I might be wrong. But to me, it all seems to point to Lucia here. Let me know what you think about Lucia in the comments below. Is she really the white bikini girl or not. I'd love to hear your thoughts down there. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be cool. If you haven't been keeping up with the latest news on GTA 6 in the past year, you might be surprised to learn just how much information has surfaced. Let's bring you up to date. Here's a rundown of everything we currently know about GTA 6. First, let's talk about the game engine. Developers have made significant tweaks to the Euphoria physics engine, enhancing ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, they're incorporating lighting and skybox systems, akin to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising improvements like volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Notably, leaks also hint at advanced weather systems, with heavy fog making an appearance, a feature less prevalent in GTA 5. Moving on to characters, while the main protagonists are Jason and Lucia, leaks have unveiled additional character names. Alongside Dre, who's distinct from Dr. Dre, there's Sam, a friend of Dre, and others like Kai, Wyman, Billy, Tit, yes, that's the name, Zach R.B. Shaw, Vicky, Iris, Shaneys, Booby, and YJ. Surprisingly, we even have details about their heights in the game, with Lucia standing at 5 3 inches and Jason at 6 1. Wait, regarding the setting, we know of three different gangs in Vice City San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far right militia. These details paint an exciting picture of what to expect in GTA 6. We're also privy to a variety of items and tools in GTA 6. Among these are the auto dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, slim gem tracker, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Furthermore, there's a confirmed list of weapons, including a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel, much like in Red Dead Redemption 2, will be divided into three sections. Weapons, equipment, 
and gear. It's interesting to note that players can hold different weapons in each hand, with a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels offer a glimpse, it's likely that the final version may evolve as the game progresses in development. In one video snippet, an NPC is seen firing at Jason, prompting a health tip to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health drops. If you find yourself injured in GTA 6, your health will regenerate slowly over time. To speed up the process, you can access your weapon wheel and use a recovery item. In GTA 5, health only regenerates up to 50%, requiring snacks for full recovery. It seems in GTA 6, you might naturally regenerate to full health, albeit at a sluggish pace. While not confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will hasten the healing process. As for open world activities, there are seven confirmed ones so far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. One video reveals a delivery van event near Port Gellhorn's industrial area, where security cameras are active, adding a layer of challenge to potential robberies. Speaking of which, robbery events are highlighted, notably the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia execute a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability, allowing him to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events centered around searching vehicle trunks for either valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gellhorn, although specifics remain unclear. In terms of accessible buildings, GTA 6 promises a plethora of options including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts strip club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries, enhancing the immersive experience. Let's delve into the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count displayed as PL2 of 32 inches in the bottom left corner. This indicates that there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. It's reminiscent of Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the stated capacity is 32, but practically it's 30 players plus two additional spots reserved for spectators. While it's hoped for larger lobbies in GTA 6, during this testing phase, it seems they were experimenting with 30 player lobbies. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In one clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, signaling its lootable nature. The debug text on this box indicates it as collectibles car parts, and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, hinting at the possibility of collecting car parts, potentially related to a character named Wyman, who speculations suggest shares an interest in classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment, where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat, according to debug text, hinting at clothing items being collectible ambient features within the game. Additionally, a compiled list of all brands featured in the game is provided, with acknowledgement that while some may hold relevance to the story, many may not. For convenience, the list is displayed on screen, allowing viewers to pause the video for further inspection if desired. Now let's explore the array of confirmed animals in the game. We'll encounter snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, waiting birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. While these are the animals confirmed thus far, it's likely we'll encounter even more upon the game's release. These are just the ones we're aware of currently. Additionally, numerous new mechanics have been uncovered. You'll have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature allowing players to go prone, marking a first in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will enable the storage of additional loot, and dropping and picking up weapons will be possible. There's a new underfire animation where characters cover their faces during combat, along with the option to self-revive after taking heavy hits. Other notable mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during fistfights, and the introduction of buddy comms and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode is introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully exit the window, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Moreover, there's a new ability system, possibly exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with more objects and NPCs, engaging in actions like carrying bodies, robbing, threatening, and conversing during robberies. Furthermore, the ability to pick up additional items like beer bottles and cans 
enriches the gameplay experience. Let's delve into some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, we have Money Laundering, which was hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon tracked to the car wash property displayed a washing machine with a dollar sign indicating potential money laundering opportunities. This suggests that properties could be purchased with the aim of laundering money, although specifics on how this will work remain undisclosed. Nonetheless, it seems players will once again have the option to purchase certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Fences, not the ones you jump over or drive through, but rather individuals involved in illegal transactions, are confirmed to be in the game. A fence acts as a middleman, buying illegal items from players to resell them to others. Hacking will also play a role, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, although it's uncertain if Jason will have access to these items as well. Previous leaks hinted at Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but only time will tell. Pragmatic, cool, and chaotic romantic are different event types mentioned in the events list. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a tip prompts players to check in with Jason, or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature should streamline gameplay, allowing players to effectively control both characters simultaneously. Let's dive into the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which is quite significant. In the Hank's Waffle robbery video, Beneath the Wanted Level Stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses have detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will have detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason is shown attempting to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as seen in a video featuring Jason in the San Fersan area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, implying the need to unlock specific doors and gates. Moving on, let's delve into the plethora of new features, spanning two full pages. Firstly, there's an enhanced AI system, exemplified in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia when she turns around. These AI adversaries showcase improved decision-making, adjusting their shooting strategy based on the circumstances. Notably, they dynamically alter their position concerning nearby objects, hopefully avoiding frustrating, head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they exhibit more tactical behavior, like lowering their profile during reloads and strafing left to right while firing. NPC behavior has also received an upgrade, with groups of AI no longer wandering solo, but instead moving in clusters, reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This is evident in a video, where Lucia encounters a group of tourists, chatting as they pass by. This adds depth to the pedestrian dynamics, as previously seen in GTA 5, where individuals roamed independently. Now, expect to see various groups, and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's immersion. A new feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with yet-to-be-revealed consequences. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, possibly serving as a health boost, although details remain speculative. Similar to GTA V, your character's attire will become soiled over time, adding a layer of realism. Furthermore, glimpses of Jason in various states, with different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, hint at a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This seems highly probable given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a gas station scene, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, indicating the ability to eat and drink on the go, similar to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a new event type known as a cop trap, which will be strategically set up in various locations. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen. This indicates that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to ensnare you. Alongside this, there's a new police system known as Time Until Cops Dispatch. Now, 
When you commit a crime, the police won't immediately appear. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement starts converging on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their functionality differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter akin to games like Payday 2 or 3. As the meter fills up, you'll need to break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players will also have the ability to restrain NPCs, primarily through zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature adds a new layer to robberies, allowing for more control over the situation. Furthermore, players can loot vehicles, as shown briefly in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV appears, suggesting the opportunity to inspect random vehicles and potentially pilfer valuables from them. In GTA 6, expect an enhanced car hijacking system. For instance, the presence of the immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, an item called a Slim Jim will be utilized to unlock older vehicles, indicating increased difficulty in car theft. Moreover, there are events that allude to the possibility of failing to steal a car, with distinct scenarios like steal car in progress and steal car fail, showcasing potential mishaps. Two intriguing events, carjacking dash cat and carjacking dash advanced AI, hint at further complexities in vehicle related activities. The game boasts improved vehicle damage and handling, evident in clips where car crashes exhibit more realistic effects, such as front fenders splitting apart and car hoods bending realistically. Furthermore, car interiors now feature a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing the immersion, especially in first-person driving. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to the gameplay experience. Considering these details, it's evident that GTA 6 prioritizes intricate design elements, as evidenced by the meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In GTA 6, expect to encounter raccoons scouring through trash cans and pilfering food bags. This is evident in the game files, where three world events, Raccoon Climb Out of Garbage, Raccoon Rummage Trash, and Raccoon Steal Food B are documented. While there are numerous intricate details to delve into, if you find this level of detail intriguing, you can find more information in the provided link below, specifically on pages 19 and 20. As for sound design, it's no surprise that sound will be more realistic in GTA 6. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. Additionally, the impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. A while back, there was a significant leak revealing a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's truly exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like. They're quite impressive. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6 sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. We've got a plethora of confirmed locations scattered throughout Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the main hub, but within its bounds, we'll find neighborhoods like Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gelhorn, which seems to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Palito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ikenfaka, Underwater Locations, and more. The attention to detail extends to each of these locales, with various mini locations nested within them. It's astounding how much information we already have about the game's geography. Moving on, the community has endeavored to piece together a map of GTA 6 based on the coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This rough map outlines Vice City at the bottom right, with Port Gorn positioned on the left. 
The top section of the map remains a bit mysterious for now. Nonetheless, this preliminary map looks incredibly promising, and anticipation for exploring its intricacies is palpable. Finally, the document wraps up with around 20 pages detailing places found in the leaks that align with real-world locales in Miami. This inclusion further underscores the meticulous efforts poured into crafting a rich and immersive game world. The developers have expanded and refined the GTA 6 map significantly, making it the most comprehensive fan-made project to date. It incorporates all available data from leaks and the initial official trailer. We'll explore the recent updates to the map and conduct a fascinating comparison between the current GTA 6 map and those of previous GTA games. Additionally, we'll examine a fan-created satellite view of the GTA 6 map, along with the inclusion of Tommy Versetti's mansion spotted in the trailer. All of these elements will be discussed in detail throughout this video. Let's kick things off with the GTA 6 mapping project. Changes have been implemented across all regions of the map. To ensure we cover everything comprehensively, we'll begin our tour from the northwest and work our way down, addressing each modification along the journey. Firstly, the map's dimensions have been expanded from 16,000 by 16,000 to 18,000 by 18,000 to accommodate the newly added landmass. Each square on the map measures 500 x 500 meters. Based on the latest estimations, the map will be larger than before, requiring more space to accommodate all its features. Currently, the northern portion of the map remains unknown, which contributes to its perceived size. Hence, the map extends beyond what's visible on the screen. According to rumors, the GTA 6 map is speculated to encompass three major cities. Presently, we're aware of two. Vice City, the largest city, and Port Gorn, which has undergone further expansion in the latest map update. The third location, Yorktown, is anticipated to be modeled after Tampa. Rumors suggest that it could be the third major city featured on the map. However, at present, there's limited information available about it in the leaks. The only indication we have is a sign displaying New York Toon within Port Gorn. Regarding Port Gorn, details are scarce apart from its name and general location. It's positioned north of Fort Killorn and east of Yorktown. Moving on, we encounter Hank Hill, one of the notable elevations in the game. Despite Florida's predominantly flat terrain, Rockstar has incorporated hills sporadically to diversify the landscape. Adjacent to Hank Hill are the Domed Hills, another series of elevated areas. Notably, the border of a river is highlighted in orange, indicating speculative terrain. Nonetheless, it appears to be situated in the vicinity of Red Hill, a small town positioned near Lake Leonida. The largest body of water, Lake Leonida, sits approximately at the map's midpoint, drawing parallels to Lake Okeechobee in real life. To the north of Lake Leonida lies Fairyland Forest, a wooded area neighboring Fairyland, a playful nod to Disney World. To the east of Lake Leonida, you'll find Ambrosia and Laurel, two additional small towns along with North Beaches. Heading south from Yorktown, we reach Port Gorn, which has undergone expansion westward. The buildings and roads depicted in black and gray correspond to those visible in leaked footage and the trailer. Roads highlighted in red, along with orange borders, remain speculative. However, the port area shows two speculative buildings and a portion of the border that's confirmed. The Bay Area has seen overall enlargement, including modifications to the speculative islands near Port Gorn. Additionally, a newly added section featuring small islands and a confirmed border indicates further expansion. With these developments, Port Gorn's size may rival that of Vice City. It might not match Vice City's scale, but it could rival, if not surpass, GTA 5's Los Santos, which is remarkable, considering it's our second city on the map. Additionally, the confirmed borders of Port Goro have been adjusted based on new evidence. The remaining areas in Port Goro largely remain unchanged. We still have Han Waffles Diner, surrounded by its buildings and structures, along with Port Gorn Motel, Gorn Bluff, the Pawn Shop, Port Gorn Raceway, Port Gorn Airfield, and the United State Prison. Belleville and Iconfina remain situated near Vice City. Now, focusing on Vice City itself, much of it retains its layout from the previous map update. We observed the increasing density of the map, particularly with the stockyard and crossdown area now filled in, along with the hotels in the Vice Beach area. The proximity of the buildings to one another is quite striking. Additionally, the buildings on Pelican Harbor Island remain consistent with the previous update. However, there's been a recent discovery. I'd appreciate your thoughts on this matter in the comments below, as it could potentially be significant if confirmed. According to this viewer, they claim to have identified Tommy Versetti's mansion in the trailer. They're referring to this specific mansion situated on the Middle Island, directly behind the enormous yacht. It bears a striking resemblance to his iconic abode, raising the possibility that it could indeed be the one. 
However, it's challenging to make a definitive judgment, since it's nighttime in the footage. It could simply resemble it, but it's difficult to confirm. Nevertheless, it would be fantastic if it indeed makes a return in the game. The recent update brought significant changes to Vice City, particularly with the Vice City port. This is where the scene featuring the bolt shot from the trailer takes place. Now, we have a clearer understanding of its entire border, with some buildings identified. There are two speculative buildings, along with some confirmed ones. The bridges have been updated, and there have been adjustments to the speculated Ryaway. Furthermore, the FLP Solar Amphitheater has been relocated northward based on new evidence. The Vice City International Airport Metro Station has also undergone updates, aligning with new information from leaks. Notably, the airport now appears more complete, with an additional hangar. These encompass all the changes made to Vice City. Now let's shift our focus to the Grass Rivers, as they've also received updates. The speculative landmass along the west coast has been adjusted to accommodate the map expansion. Notably, the Lake SLW Waterway now connects to the Grass Rivers, providing insight into the potential appearance of this swampy region on the map. A scene from the trailer showcased the Airbolt, a vehicle likely used for traversing these areas. Hamlet remains in its original position, serving as a parody of Homestead. It's interesting to note the location of the Shaka Shed, situated in the middle of the Grass Rivers, reminiscent of the shack seen in Lemoyne in Red Dead Redemption 2. This suggests that this area may draw inspiration from its counterpart. Furthermore, I anticipate hunting to be quite intense in this region, given the presence of alligators, snakes, and lizards. The diverse wildlife, particularly at night, is bound to create a thrilling atmosphere. Additionally, changes have been made to the Gator Keys and the surrounding islands, as observed in the trailer. More specifically, there have been additions to speculative locations, such as Bird Key, based on new evidence. Additionally, some speculative areas across the map have been updated. That wraps up the analysis of the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. It'll be intriguing to see how closely it aligns with the actual map. Moreover, let's delve into a fascinating comparison between this latest version and all the other maps in the GTA series. Take a look at this comparison. On the left side, you'll find the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Above it, there's the map of North Yankton from GTA 5. To the right of the North Yankton map, you'll see the island of Copico from GTA Online. Next to Copico, there's the GTA 5 map. Below that, we have the GTA 4 map. Below the GTA 4 map, are the maps of Liberty City and GTA 3. And finally, at the bottom, there's the map of GTA San Andreas. One of the first things I noticed is how compact the GTA 4 map appears compared to others. Despite its small size, it boasted greater density than the GTA V map. Streets were closely packed, and every inch of space was utilized efficiently. Anyone who's played GTA 4 can attest to the unparalleled density of its city, brimming with intricate details. I anticipate a similar level of density and attention to detail in the GTA 6 map. Considering the vastness of the GTA 4 map, despite its modest size, I expect the density in GTA 6 to match, if not surpass, that level. Even though GTA 6 is already approximately twice the size of the GTA 5 map, the addition of intricate details will make it feel even more expansive. Now, let's examine a comparison between the old GTA Vice City map and the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. The old Vice City map has been superimposed onto the new one, allowing for a visual comparison of the two. What caught my attention was the size of the GTA Vice City map, which is quite substantial. However, in GTA 6, improvements are expected across the board. There will be more buildings positioned closer together, enhancing the overall design and creating a denser environment. I also wanted to discuss a map that's been generating a lot of buzz within the community. Someone utilized images from Google Maps to supplement the mapping project. This method offers a clearer perspective on how the game's environment might appear in terms of scale and layout. While this representation may exaggerate the city's size with an abundance of buildings, it provides insights into the length and layout of highways, which have been overlaid with speculative areas. Additionally, looking at Yorktown, despite the lack of details, its size hints at the potential scale of both Yorktown and Port Gorn. Furthermore, the top portion of the map may resemble the depiction, although details remain uncertain. Considering the vast array of features such as multiple airports, cities, small towns, mountains, hills and swamps, it's evident that GTA 6's map is poised to be the most impressive in the series. There's little doubt that it will set a new standard, 